Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jeff uh, from BrightSquid. I'll be starting things off here with some introduction and just kind of some brief overview of what we're going to look at. Uh, with me is Mark, our Director of Customer Operations, who um, spends uh, his entire life inside SecureMail and helping clinics um, manage their virtual care systems and programs through SecureMail. Um, so, Mark, are you, are you there? Can we... Uh... <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Yeah, great. So, um, let's dive in because we want to keep this to 15 minutes and everybody's really busy. Um, so if we want to just go to the next slide, here we go. So um, we want to talk about uh, our shared inbox feature today, which is really popular in clinics. And it was actually uh, sort of a, a request from a number of clinics a couple of years ago that wanted to have the ability to have a number of people monitor and address messages that came in um, to the clinic from patients or other clinics. Um, so you would see this and Mark will show you, it exists on the left-hand navigation of your SecureMail account. Um, it says shared inbox, so you should have two inboxes. If you have access to shared inbox, you'll have your personal and your shared inbox, which is really a clinic inbox or uh, it really functions as a virtual front desk. And we'll show you what that means. But um, patient messages come into the front desk team as everybody who has access can see that. Um, you can use it to collect free appointment information, um, book appointments. Um, re so we can, we can actually have, we have clinics who have reduced um, the actual interview time or appointment time by 50%. So we've cut our in-person visits down um, in half so we can see more patients in the day address more issues just by collecting a lot of the information up front through your virtual front desk or secure mail. Um, you can forward our triage messages that come in. So messages are actually addressed to the clinic um, and anybody can see what messages were responded to and who addressed those messages. So it's very helpful in terms of, you don't have to yell out, hey, who has anybody addressed this question from Mrs. Davis? Um, you can see exactly who did that when. Um, clinics that use this have reduced their phone traffic by actually quite a bit more than 30%. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, this is this is a replacement for phone. And what we see when this is used that way, um, staff are actually more satisfied. We've seen um, staff retention rates go up because of this, because the phone's not ringing off the hook. People are actually able to focus on tasks, um, do what they need to. You're not going back and listening to voicemail messages a couple times. Um, and people actually kind of get worked on. You can address secure mail messages, not just as they come in, but in batches, you know, at specific times through the day. And that's the expectation from anybody who would be sending you messages through this meeting. We're all familiar with how email works. Um, and uh, the statistics actually show a minimum of 80% of virtual care is conducted through secure messaging. So we tend to think about virtual care as a video channel, um, but but actually when you look at the statistics, there's a there's a study, Kaiser Permanente does a lot of research on how they operate. And um, if you look at what, they're, what they've seen, uh, about 83% of their telemedicine or virtual care is done by secure messaging. 17% is, uh, is phone based and you can see 83 plus 17 is 100 but um, there is a small sliver in there of about half a percentage point that is done by video and this is looking at over 36 million interactions um, only a hundred thousand of them uh, were con conducted by video um, so let's go to the next slide we'll just show a quick example of sort of what a virtual care workflow looks like um, this is obviously a little bit simplistic but um, there's not a lot to it really. If we look at what the anatomy of, of a virtual, we'll look at um, just sort of a routine request for you know prescription refill here. The patient sends a message to the clinic saying, "Hey, I need more of my medication." And depending on who that patient is and how it's set up, um, you know there might be a standing order for your MOA to say, um, "Oh, I know Mrs. Jones, um, her prescription, everything's fine, she's stable. We can we can just renew that and, and send off the renewal." Um, you know, or just, you know, hey, let's collect all those and put them in a queue. And at the end of the day, or when there's there's time available, maybe during lunch, um, I know some clinicians might review these types of things in the evening. Um, you can just, they can just log in and say, okay, here's the list of patients that have requested a prescription renewal, do a quick review on each one, and um, just sort of send the appropriate response and then that the, the, the MOA can handle what happens after that. You can see that this is all handled within SecureMail and the EMR and other scenarios. 
um, where there might be a video consult done um, sort of during the visit. Uh, we would look at different technologies that you might use for that, um, or there might be phone in there as well. Um, but this is kind of the basics of it. You can see the virtual front desk handles a lot of the work in this case. Um, they're the one interacting with the patient and any of any of the assigned MOAs or RNs who might need access to that, that inbox um, can respond. So you don't have to worry about schedules and anything like that. And the other thing about this that's great is you don't have to worry about lining up schedules to have a phone conversation. Um, this all happens conveniently when everybody has time to, to send a response. So that's kind of the basics of it. I'll turn over to Mark now to go through a demonstration of how this works and what it looks like in secure mail in practice. Hey, thanks a lot, Jeff. You know, and I want to just point out a couple of things that uh, that you touched on, uh, just to sort of stress a couple of really important points about virtual care for our patients, is that, um, you know, I talk to a lot of uh, uh, medical professionals, MOAs, doctors, uh, dentists and their staff and everyone else, and the and the, the the concern or the or the furrows in the brow that I often see are when I talk about virtual care, they worry that their patients aren't getting as good of care as they would with a face to face visit and so and things like that nature. And and I just want to reassure everyone that you know secure mail um, can address a lot of of medical requirements, but we're not telling you uh, we're not telling the patients that they can't come in and still see their doctor. Uh, that's still very much a uh, you know a common way to receive medical uh, assistance. Uh, you know these days with uh, with our, our lockdown during the pandemic, there's less of that going on. But I just want to make sure that uh, you know we're making the point that you know virtual care works in a lot of scenarios, but it's not intended to uh, you know sort of reduce the level of care or or eliminate in-person visits in any way. And I just wanted to bring that up. So with that said, I want to now show you an example of a, of a virtual care uh, scenario that we see literally hundreds of times a day in the secure mail service. Um, so what I'm going to do, if you're seeing my screen now, is I'm going to log into the BrightSquid secure mail service, and I'm going to log in to begin with as a patient. So you're seeing my screen now because I'm logging into secure mail through the web browser. Uh, the service that we're showing here is entirely web-based. So there's no software to download or install, and I can use it from any device that's connected to the internet. So that includes Windows computers, Mac computers, iPhones, Android devices, iPads, essentially any any modern device that connects to the internet and has a web browser, um, you can use to log into and use your secure mail account. So I am logging in as a fellow named Adam Abel, and when I log in as Mr. Abel, I will go to my secure mail inbox. Now, in my inbox, as you can see, it looks a lot like regular email. Here's some previous messages that I've gotten from uh, various doctors that I interact with. And I have a concern that perhaps I have a virus. So I could, of course, pick up the phone and make an appointment and in a couple of days go down and see my doctor. But what I'd rather do is just send a quick note to the, uh, to the doctor's office and uh, sort of get some advice. So I'm going to compose a new message. And I will address the message to my doctor's office. Now, the doctor that I see is Dr. Fouchard, and his clinic is called the Fouchard Clinic. So I just tap on or click on that practice name, and then I just compose my message. And um, so I'll say I have concerns about COVID-19, like a lot of us do these days. And then I'll just type my message here in the body of the uh, of the uh, of the secure mail interface. Now. This is going to take me a couple of moments to do, and then when I'm ready, I just click send, and this message gets delivered to my doctor's office. Now, I didn't do anything that different from traditional email, uh, but I do want to point out that the BrightSquid Secure Mail Service, although it looks and feels and behaves like traditional email, it's absolutely not um, you know, open email. We're a closed system designed specifically for the transmission of patient health information. So when the patient uploaded their information, he can be confident that it's going directly to his doctor's office. Uh, unlike traditional email, which has all kinds of security issues, um, this is entirely compliant with the regulations here in Canada, the United States, and even in the, in the UK and the, and the EU. So now, if you'll bear with me here for one moment, I'm going to change my point of view. So I'll log out of uh, Mr. Abel's account, and I'll simply, because I'm a web-based application, I'll just log in as the other person in this interaction. So now I'm logging in as Clara Barton, who is a uh, medical office administrator at the Fouchard Clinic. 
And when she logs into her secure mail account, it looks very similar, but one small discrete difference between uh, this MOA's account and the patient's account is our MOA has access to the shared inbox. Now, as Jeff commented on earlier, the shared inbox or the virtual front desk is um, monitored and, and maintained by a group of people within the practice. Uh, that group doesn't include the doctor. Uh, in this particular practice, it's just four or five MOAs that are staffing the uh, the inbox. And what's like the way your phone systems work? When the patient picks up a phone and, and dials your number, uh, there's generally you know a couple of people that might answer the phone. Uh, it's rare that it's the doctor that answers the phone. It does happen in some cases, but usually it's someone on the front line who triages those incoming calls. So here's our message from Mr. Abel in our virtual help desk. Let's have a look. So here's what he just typed. Uh, you know, hi, Dr. Fashar. You'll notice that he's addressing the doctor, but he sent the message to the practice, which is just fine, because now as the MOA at this office, I can, of course, review the message, and when and where it's appropriate, just like I would with regular email or even as on a phone call, I can reply back to Mr. Abel directly, or if it's, uh, if it's a right to do so, I could forward the message off to Dr. Fouchard and let him deal with this. He could send a response back to the patient and uh, you know, set his mind at ease or you know, answer whatever questions uh, he might want to. But it looks like Mr. Abel really wants to come in and talk to somebody. So I'm going to reply back to him. So remember, I'm the MOA now, I'm Clara, and I'm going to send Adam a response saying, yeah, you know, we'd be happy to have you come in uh, or we can meet with you virtually. So I'll just type this message. Now, of course, I copied and pasted that to save some time. <laughs> I don't really type that fast. Um, but here's the message that I'm going to send back, uh, which I just had prepared as a template. So I'm going to say to Adam, yeah, we're happy to set up a virtual consult with you, with Dr. Fouchard. But before we confirm your date, I need to get some more information. So I'm going to send a form to Adam. So I'll attach this PDF document. And say, look, I just need you to fill in this form, answer a couple of quick questions so we can sort of specify what conditions you might be dealing with, and then I'll send that back to Adam. So in just the same way, uh, the message now goes out. Adam gets a notification through his email that says, Clara at the Fouchard Clinic has sent you a new message. Adam would log into his account, view that PDF document, fill in his answers, send it back, and then Clara can then get to work with scheduling a, uh, a phone appointment or on some rare occasions, a, a video chat, but probably gonna be a phone appointment so that uh, Adam can discuss his concerns about COVID-19 uh, directly with the doctor. Or perhaps the form will come back and we can just address it remotely through another secure mail message. But there's a lot of flexibility. This is just one use case um, of how secure mail can be used to, uh, to communicate back and forth with patients and uh, handle a lot of their of their questions and and, uh, and concerns without having to, them to come into the office, which saves the patient time, it saves your practice time, and it just makes the overall uh, me method of, of providing healthcare that much more efficient. So that is our uh, shortened demo. So I'm going to switch back over to my uh, slides that we were looking at earlier. There we go. And I'll just turn it back over to Jeff to uh, talk about sort of what's coming up next and what uh, other webinars are going to be available in the very near future. Great. Thanks, Mark. So, um, yeah, we are doing this series. It's going to be ongoing. Um, we'll keep doing these every Friday at noon for 15 minutes um, just to check in. Um, you know, uh, we'll be reviewing some other little tips as we go. Um, so you can see that uh, so eventually we're getting into a, a TB. TBD in terms of the content, um, but if you're registered for this webinar, you are registered for all the following ones, uh, with the exception of the one on April 28th, so we will be sending out um, a notice for that if you want to get registered. Um, we'll talk about how, you know, SecureMail works to keep your clinic private uh, and compliant with privacy laws. Um, that is still a concern, and we need to make sure that you're operating in a way that, that uh, is in line with privacy regulations and anything that you implement um, should be reviewed um, for its privacy compliance in terms of technology that you're looking at for virtual care. Secure mail obviously is something that is acceptable for use um, that maintains patient privacy. So that's an important thing to look at. So we'll be looking at the end of the month and in, in how to maintain that across the clinic as you look to implement more virtual care. Um, and then of course, like I said, all of these uh, will, will continue ongoing. And then I think we have one last slide in the that realm um, if you if you need to do some sort of assessment or you want to learn how 
uh, your privacy compliance is and what else you could do to be better protected. Um, we do have a privacy risk assessment. You can access it through our website on our homepage um, and uh, that'll take you through just a quick quiz and we can do a follow-up with one of our onboarding support reps just to, to help you understand what else you can do to be more compliant. Um, and uh, that's our time for today. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks Mark to you for, for taking us through the demonstration. Um, we will be sending this out and all of these webinars around virtual care are posted on our website. If you go to brightsquid.com, click the about uh, tab in the navigation at the top. There's a, a drop down menu that comes and there's a virtual care tab that'll house all of these virtual care webinars as we go forward. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.